first I would like to ask, like, uh, have you tried working on the entity that your bro brother has? Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I actually, it, it took like two days, actually. I, uh, on, on the first day, I did it from, um, from my apartment from here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, took all your advice and uh, imagined it. And I, I really just pictured, my, um, I always usually do the same thing. Like, I'll, I'll imagine a, a white room which is like pretty uh, easy for me uh, and uh, it allows me to keep everything. It, it's kind of like a white room is like a blank slate. So like it, it allows me to add um, items or objects or people without having any other distractions. So I did that and I imagined that being standing in front of me as creepy as she is and uh, sitting down at the table and uh, and we're conversing right and uh she she wasn't really see this is where it gets like strange because like uh she wasn't really cooperating like didn't want to cooperate and and i'm always like double checking is this real is this real is this real so she didn't really want to cooperate and and just like no no not leaving not no you know and uh, so i imagined uh you know again trying to get to her manager, let's say, or whoever was uh, her handler, <laughs> whoever was controlling her, and um, it wasn't really working. Like she was just like, no, 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 no. So the next day, actually, by chance, I ended up uh, going to my parents, and uh, so I decided to go up into my brother's old room and uh, do the same thing there. And uh, I had more luck. I don't know if it was just because of being persistent, but. Um, from there, what happened was same thing. And this time uh, she directed me, she was more open about it. And, and I did ask for the for her story first. So mm -hmm. my sense of what her story was, I didn't get a clear, very clear like timeline. I All I got was uh, were certain keywords. So uh, raped and tortured was uh, pretty much what uh, what I got from her. That was like the first thing that came, came yeah. to me. So from there, um, yeah, she didn't want to go. I'm just reading my notes now. <laughs> she kept point, pointing, you know, uh, as, as like the beings, for some reason in my interactions, they'll always do like this. And that, that for me, well, I don't know if you see it, mm -hmm. <laughs> point, right? So for me, that means elsewhere, like go, you know, uh, next, you know, find, find the, the next person up. So I did that. And, and curiously enough, it ended up being that, remember that ant guy I, I showed you? Yeah. Like the first session, it was like that cloaked, uh, ant gray hybrid being. So I, I, it ended up pointing to that and that ended up pointing to a, another being, which was, uh, uh, this is so weird. It ended up being this being that kind of looked like a uh, Hellboy, but bigger, like more uh, robust, uh, like bigger, like top, like huge, huge arms, big, big horns. Uh, it kind of looked like half bull, half man. Mm -hmm. And uh, like it, it, in, in this fiery type of realm, and he was like just sitting. So I envisioned this whole, uh, you can stop me anytime you want if this gets like weird, too weird or whatever. It's okay. I, again, I, like, I'm never sure if this is like me playing it, playing it out, but um, we uh, conversed and uh, didn't, he didn't want to let them go. So uh, I just envisioned my beingness getting larger than he was because like at, at first the size difference was exponentially uh, larger in his favor. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I increased my size and I felt like there was some kind of like conflict going on. And then the next image I saw was uh, him like, I don't know if he was dead, but he was like on the ground, the fire was out. And I kind of had like my, my I, I kind of saw this from a third person perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So I see like my, my avatar or whatever, which was like light, made out of light. And he was just like standing on, on that other being who was just like on the ground like that. Uh, like I said, fires extinguished, and uh, 
from there, what happened was pretty interesting. Um, I went back, like uh, in, in my mind's eye, I went back to that being and uh, she had actually, uh, I was actually able to see for the first time her face. So like every time I had seen her previously, her, her hair was just covering her, her, um, her face. And it was just like a, a white nightgown type thing. And she was very stiff. But from here, uh, from here on out, the hair was like uh, clean uh, and flowing and I could see her face. I could actually literally like draw her out. Like she had detail to her face and uh, her she was glowing, skin glowing. Uh, and the setting was no longer the white room. It was a, a green, like a green pasture. So I also, what I also ended up doing was, uh, again, taking your advice, I, I thought about creating some type of like safe space for that uh, being uh, where she could be free to do what she needed to do. And the same for that, that ant type being. So uh, this is a long story in case you didn't know. It's all good. <laughs> so from there, uh, you know, I saw her face. Uh, sh sh it seemed like it cleared up. She ran off into this green pasture with beautiful trees and sunny skies, and uh, um, actually ran into the, the arms of a, of a man. So she was reunited with someone, and uh, from there, uh, I kept double checking to see if this was if if it was indeed like. A real thing so i was doing that and i was replaying what i had seen and it was striking me as okay like these are memories and this is not like what i was seeing presently was happening in uh, at, at, in real time now and what i had seen working up to that uh, replayed to me as memory so i was kind of reconfirming for myself uh if what i had in fact seen was actually happening <laughs> and then Another interesting happen, thing happened uh, when I actually entered the bedroom, there was like this sense of anxiety immediately. And when I had, when I got up and ended the session and left, there was a sense of uh, peacefulness and, and calm. So now, uh, since that happened, I did this last week, I, I'm just waiting for, <laughs> I, I asked for confirmation. If there's some kind of confirmation that I could receive, I haven't spoken to my brother, but um uh, that is that is what happened. That was uh, that was the session. So I don't know. Uh, what do you think about that? <laughs> this is actually very interesting. Like, uh, it's it's good to know that you're like taking thing, taking things into your own like matters, like you know, just like uh, handling it and all. Um, and very interesting. Like I've met those bull-like beings, like you know, like sort of humanoid, but also like bull-like. Um, I think really? it was called like Alberians or something. Uh, but literally like same like uh, similar looks like humanoid with bull like head and all into oh, really? raping and killing and torturing and stuff and like uh, as i was doing the session and looking at the past Are you episode, like, exactly oh my god this is, this is the best part like because what you're saying and i'm like oh yeah i've seen that like so i'm working on the person and he's like um been through a lot of stuff and looking like you know like why am i in this place like what was going on in my life and all and i'm looking like he was a warrior going against this bull race to save his girlfriend in this current life and that they have issues right now. So I was looking into his stuff and basically he goes against these like Aldarians, like bull-like beings, and they're into killing, torturing, raping and stuff. And they like, uh, they have their own like spacecraft or they have like hire people, like mercenaries and stuff. And they go off on our planets, kidnap people, like where's the like, humans or Pleiadians or some any kind of race, uh, usually going for girls. They take them and then put them on that, that realm and they just like uh, have fun, you know, like this is their thing, like 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 barbarians or Vikings or some like, you know, like like Mongols, like just going after it, pleasing their needs and stuff, and like literally killing off a lot of people or like raping all this stuff. So this guy, uh, he's more playing like a uh, zoo tracks, more of like a lion, like cat like being, and he goes to that place, kills off beings, frees the girl, and like gets them off to safe place. But after this session where we find out like what happened in their past lives and stuff, also like issues in the relationship resolved. So it's like very interesting to see that like the girl that has those, those issues and what you've gone through, like you know, like looking at the high ups meeting the kind of being, uh, it matches it matches up to what I'm seeing and some other people like as well, like you know, like when they tell like, hey I've seen this bull like being like humanoid bull and all like I'm like, hey, stories match. So eventually like um might be seeing like things and like not understanding it like oh it's kind of weird seeing the guy and stuff but eventually 
things match up on the on like cleanest level. That that is insane. That's insane because like I've never seen that type of thing, and I really like 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 you said, I, I just uh, approach it with an open mind and I try to, I just let it come to me, and and you know, and I, and I, <laughs> I try not to question it, but uh, that is unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Like I'm really like surprised <laughs> i was not expecting that answer <laughs> uh i'm glad you're sharing this because like you know like seeing you sort of like um you know like having your journey where you're like okay this is what's was well, like what happened in the past where you are right now and then you like sort of evolve and like just keep on going through you're learning like you know your process and everything else like it's it's pretty awesome so like what you're learning right now like might be little or like big in your eyes but you know you can actually get a long way from there that's oh wow well, that's 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 that is awesome that's great to hear because uh for me it's like uh the visuals aren't 100 percent uh you know super super clear all the time so like i'm never sure if it's uh like you said you know stop questioning yourself but uh, that that is something i definitely have to work on but um yeah i mean there's there's stuff there's other ones too you know like, like uh, same thing last week last week was a pretty big week where um Again, here in the apartment, just another one, you know, uh, had an, an out of body. It's remember when we were talking about like that praying movement there. Yeah. Well, I had seen a being doing that, and uh, for some reason, it, it registered into my mind, and, and my astral body started doing that. And uh, whenever I go into like that conscious out of body state, th there's kind of like this strange like transfer. Uh, it goes from like your, what you're seeing through your eyelids, right? Which is kind of like the daredevil view. And yeah. then it kind of like uh, the blackness kind of gives way to, to color and to a place. Uh, that's the, how it works for me. So like even the astral body, like I'll see my, it always works with hands. Like I'm, I'm very like, I use my hands as like my anchors to, to get me to that other side. So, uh, yeah, and seeing like my hands changing and transforming uh, and becoming more in focus, I started doing that for some reason. It was like auto on automatic. And uh, I entered into this uh, lucid, you know, uh, out of body state. But um, I, I ended up entering. It's weird because this happens a lot. I, tr I uh, was transported again to my it was like my bedroom from when I was like a teen or even my early 20s when I used to live uh, with my parents, you know, my, my old bedroom, basically. Yeah. I got transferred there and everything was like the way it was, you know, it's not, it's not, it's no longer like that, but it was like this frozen state. So I, I get up from uh, the bed I look over at the bed and it's got, uh, it's got like a groove in there. Like I had been lying there a very long time. <laughs> And, and I'm like looking around and I'm like, oh man, I must be dreaming or something like, cause this isn't the way it looks now. I lie back down and upon lying down at the, fr at the, the bed, at the foot of my bed, I see this, my God, it was like crystal clear. I see this young little girl and uh, must've been like four or five, six years old max. And uh, she's speaking to me, but I can't hear her, can't hear her words she's mouthing things and i i can only I, I feel like i'm picking up what she's trying to tell me telepathically but i can't like hear it yeah so she's telling me her name and uh i go through a couple names i finally get like the right name jesse and uh you know i'm speaking like nicely to her i'm asking what are you doing here like what, what is it and uh as as i'm questioning her like right away right beside her appears this uh you know beetlejuice you ever see beetlejuice mm, the movie? i dub it okay let me show you what i saw okay <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is from a movie done by uh tim burton and this character is called beetlejuice so the story of this character is that he's uh he's like an undead well he's a guy who died and became this entity okay yeah so next to the girl i see a being that looks very similar actually he was more grotesque than this like his teeth yeah. were bigger more yellow and brown and he was just like with big beady eyes like that just like way bigger he was just staring at me with like this big smile on his face so i'm gonna just like take this off the screen because it's kind of freaky <laughs> <laughs> 
So he's looking at me like that, and he, he was dressed a lot, kind of like raggedy like that, but like darker clothes. And he was just uh, staring right at me, just like with this face of like intensity. Uh, and I felt like he was going to hurt the girl. So like I instantly, my impulse was just to get out of the bed and like rush him. So I rush him and uh, he runs behind me, but I grab him by the, by the collar and I pull him close to me and I tell him, you get the fuck out of here. And don't ever come back. And I threw him and he just disappeared like that. As I turned around, it, it freaked the little girl out. And, and uh, her, her, uh, her state changed. She changed from being like uh, nice, look, like, like all like normal looking to her hair was all wet. She was pale and afraid and she just ran past me. And, and then that was it. Then I, I, after all that, it brought me out of there. So, um, yeah, what do you think of that? What, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen those types of beings, but uh, you think it was a message from uh, beyond, from the dead, from beyond the grave? Like, what, what are we dealing with here? What? Uh, I think you're like, you're doing good. Like, you're like, the first instinct, the instinct that comes to you, like, you're like, where you feel like she's in danger, you need, you need to help her. Like, it's good that you're doing that. Because sometimes, like, beings come and, like, they ask for help. Like, you know, some, some will try to use, like, a sign language or different kind of things. And, you know, she might try to, like, uh, like portray that message telepathically and not talk out loud because he would pick it up. And she's, like, trying to, like, sort of give it wow. to you, which is, like, why you're, like, why you hear telepathically and so that he will not hear it. Like, or, like, sort of, hey, hey she's, she's trying to get for help. I need to get her out of there or something. So... You know, my perspective is like, you know, you get rid of the baddie and the girl is more like, like when you change your state, like it doesn't matter if you're in your, in Ubi, dream state, anywhere else, you go into from being normal, like, you know, like perceiving situation to being like more like angry, like, you know, you're going to get into just like, hey, get the hell out of here and stuff. So you throw them off, but you're like your like vibration and frequency changes into more like negative, which is why you turn, turn into different realities, like the same place. It's just like, oops, a bit like different. Now it's like more like, let's say, negative for anguish. And the girl changes as well. Like, oh, she's reacting to your created world or your vibration. And so like, she's like, oh, shit, like she runs away as well. But it's okay because you can be anywhere in the multiverse. You can be out of body in a dream state or whatever. And literally like be neutral and perceive situation. But then you can also become happy or like sort of like hype yourself up and feel good. And your emotion, how you feel, will change the world around you. For example, you're in a dead planet, and you just, like, hype yourself with love and just send it to the world and whatever. And things start growing and blooming and everything else, and, like, it's really pretty. But if you get angry, that emotion will send everything into burning and stuff. So, you know, it's, it's everything, like, fine, you know, you're taking care of things and stuff. It's just, like, you're perceiving how the world reacts when you change your vibrational state. That is fascinating. So it's really that uh, that flexible like yeah. you could literally, my goodness. <laughs> so you really got to have some sense of, well, if, if we're out of, cause I remember last week when we spoke about being out, uh, when you get out, you're, you become more of a point of attention than you, than you are like you with all your thoughts and your ego and, and all that stuff. So when you're out in that way, uh, are, are the emotions more, um, because they're intense when you're, in this state right so yeah. when you're out there do you have those emotions are they as intense because it, you know because you haven't um when you have those intense emotions if things can change so quickly then things can get really uh you can cause a lot of havoc right yeah let's say like in this physical reality we have duality good bad right wrong and all this stuff so everything reacts to us and so like you know, like let's say we're here in this world we're seeing all these creepy things happening react to it in a fearful way and we manifest it like negative future like oh like the world is getting darker every day it, because like we look at bad news and we start manifesting it because we're afraid or like sort of like in, in, in that chaotic state when we're out of body and let's say we're out of body but we're still in this physical universe we are still in this construct or matrix. We are embedded in it. And so whatever we experience, good or bad, you know, like it's all like sort of like a, just a matter of point of view and like perception. But when we hype ourselves with some sort of emotion, we are part of the construct creating it and like we sort of enhance it. Uh, but let's say we go into greater realities for the fifth dimension or just like away from the matrix. 
and we can participate in the game, but now we are in control and we can be in that emotion and experience it all the way, but we will not like explode it because like right now, like, oh, I can be in this emotion and go through it and like experience like full anger or love or whatever I want, but the world will not change unless I want it to change. And you can sort of like uh, sort of have an option. I'm going to react and change the world with me or I'm going to react and nothing changes. And over here, we sort of like don't have the full control because we react and like, you know, like everything changes with us and like, oh shit, I'm doing bad thing. Which is why like it's part of the dark side. Don't get angry. Don't get this. Don't get that. And they're trying to like, you know, like it's all about love. Love thy enemy. You get bitch slapped and like, oh yeah, thank you. Boom again. <laughs> so like, you know, um, turn the other cheek is sort of like, you know, like a light to fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> turn the other cheek so I can slap it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, dark side is using it a lot. <laughs> Manipulators, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and, and you know, and the other the other thing that struck me about uh, that whole situation was, uh, and it's it happens a lot where I'll get into the out of body state, and I'll, for some reason, when I'm really when I'm more lucid, my cat's just watching us. <laughs> when I'm more lucid, uh, I always end up and I always end up there, which is which is odd. I end up in like. This, the house where I grew up, but as it was at a, at a particular time. The weather outside will change depending on the weather that we're having that day, but it's it's always there. And uh, I have the same the same inclination. I'll, whenever I appear there, I'll go to the window and try to like get out and like I feel like I'm, I'm trapped there. So yeah. can, can that be a, a construct uh, developed by something that's pulling me back there for some reason? Exactly, like uh, I'm thinking about the same thing because, like, we can get out of body and beings like see like our ability, and a lot of times they will try to make the construct of the place that is similar to us and we're comfortable with. So, it can be our room or bedroom or whatever. It's like a spawn place in the video game you die and you're going to respawn in the same place all the time, and you get back yeah. to the same point, like, oh, like restarting the game from the checkpoint. Well, they see, like, okay, this being gets out, gets out here. We're gonna put him back in there and let's say the construct like they limit you in your room and you get out and you can be only in your room but you cannot like get out from there so like they're using like let's say faraday's cage uh like technology like that or you know like gravity things where people get into the one one specific place they're in the room in their house and the movement can become super slow and they're heavy and sluggish yes. and everything yes yeah, yeah, yeah. i was just gonna say that yes yeah oh my god <laughs> so it's like increased gravity like you know they're, you're like you're still here on earth so to speak but like out of body but like in that like part of the, your room and they have increased gravity and everything else it's like magnetic pull and now you're stuck in that construct so like now when you are there and you saw what happens when you get angry like people around you react you can do the same thing but like try flowing love and just like now you're gonna transform the whole place from your like let's say higher vibrational state and everything like that concert can be like exploded by the, your good feelings and now you're gonna create a freedom where you're actually free either that or more like um think of any other place that you're comfortable with or just want to go to put an intention there or sort of visualize it and you can teleport so it's like moving your consciousness like from this point of view to this just shifting and you know you should be out of there but a lot a lot of people have it like they're either in the tunnel or in the room or in their house and they're always in the same place and they're like well it's our body but it sucks because i'm always in the same place you know <laughs> what's the point so yeah. it happens oh my goodness i was i was just about to add that that yeah like every time i appear because it's not all the time uh but the times where i do appear there it's uh, when I'm the most lucid, you know, it's when I, I have like that transfer from waking to, to um, fully conscious out of body. Yeah. It's, and, and like, like you said, it's heavier. The movement is slow. Like it's, everything's in slow motion. So my goodness. Wow. What a confirmation. That's amazing. So fascinating. So I, what would what would be the ideal thing? Do do you want to like blow up that construct when you're when you're actually there, or can you do this like remotely from like uh, 3D existence? Like uh, you know, like I can go meditate now and just dismantle it. Yeah, exactly. You can do it like right now. Like let's say you get in the meditative state and just focus it now. A lot of people are like waiting. Oh, when I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna do things. 
But the thing is, like, when they're there, they're not aware that, like, of the Kajuk anymore, and they start engaging in the stories, like, opening your eyes, and you're in the game, and you're playing, and, like, oh, you're in the middle of something, and you're just continuing the experience and stuff. So, like, what's better, like, you're like, okay, right now you perceive the situation as it is, it's more like a construct, a trap, and you focus on it, and, you know, a simple visualization, like, you're like, okay, this is the construct, and you allow the story to flow into you, like, okay, this is the construct, this is who created it, this is who da 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 and you basically follow, like, you know, like, again, like, you know, the hierarchy and stuff, and you can take things apart just from right now, and, it, like, it works like magic. It really, it really does, it's so fascinating. And, and it's really, uh, you know, since we, you mentioned the tunnel, since we had that session about the tunnel and I, and I dissolved it, you know, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it since. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to try this and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll touch base on that and see like uh, where it goes from there. Great. Another uh, thing that you can do is like, let's say it is the program spawning place for you, like a specific time, they say like, oh, you, this is when, you know, you're most lucid, and so we're gonna make sure like you go there so that you wouldn't have the full freedom. So when you take right. things apart, you sort of can program yourself to go, let's say, greater reality, where like, you know, like some people call it car or whatever, you just like picture it of how it feels like, away from duality, away from the matrix and everything, or you can create your own realm, and if you want to, you can create the program to yourself where, okay, when I get a body, I'm gonna be here. So you're already escaped, like, you know, like you've, you've out of the, you're out of the physical universe, out of the 3D, out of the duality and the matrix, and you have all the freedom, so all of a sudden, like, boom, you're, you know, not in the trap anymore, <laughs> if you want to, like, you because know, some people can, like, get out of body after destroying a spawning place, and they're gonna be in the room or other places, but you might, you know, some people might feel like, hey, I don't want to be here, I want to see something new, and you just create the spawning place wherever you want to, if, if you mm -hmm. want, just, just saying. Absol I absolutely want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i kind of feel like it's uh there's like some kind of like maybe a ability for them to detect when i'm most lucid when i make that transition and i end up there and it could probably be linked to like intuitively it's just i, I feel like that place was a safe space for me and i they've kind of turned that safe space into like like you said a faraday cage just to to uh not because like it's one thing if you appear in a dungeon, you know you're a prisoner, right? Yeah. But if you appear in a safe space, they're not. Ne you're not necessarily going to uh, question that right away. Yeah. You know? uh, uh, on that note, uh, some other some other things about getting out of body uh, that, I, that I thought about. I remember uh, when I was like first learning about uh, about the relearning that stuff. Uh, there was a guy who was talking about uh, taking uh, rocks from nature and making a, a grid around your your sleeping area. So when I was like really building up that uh, those abilities, the first time <laughs> uh, I had done that, I had built a grid. This was like a couple of stones from nature, from mm -hmm. the beach or something. And uh, I was listening to to. Um, they weren't necessarily binaural beats they were those those frequencies right yeah now do you think those are beneficial or do you think uh maybe these these methods could actually play against what we're trying to do in terms of getting out of body and increasing your your vibration and consciousness yeah i think it's more like a matter of our belief about it because let's say some people can be religious and see God and they focus on God and God will solve everything for them. So they put all their trust and consciousness in that and they trust it and stuff. Some people can pick a crystal and say like, hey, with this, I'm going to be so powerful. And they give the power to it with their belief and it works. Some people look at the same crystal and they're like, eh, it's just a stone, you know. So it's more like a... You know, if you believe that, like, okay, this rock will empower it, you are programming the reality to work for you. So you can create any kind of thing. You can, like, put a glass of water or a few of them around your bed and say, this will be a channeling true and, like, put me out of the great mulvers. And it's going to work. Like, you literally can create your own methods any way you want. Like, there are no right way to do it and stuff. It's just, like, you are the one creating the reality and whatever you program, it all is going to work. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's, a, <laughs> there's a very similar method, like not, not the rocks, but like, let's say like, uh, you're in your bedroom and you have like four corners of the wall. So what you do is like, you imagine, let's say whatever warrior or, or soldier, you can like change the looks whichever way you want. But let's say, imagine a soldier, a warrior, and four of them are in four corners of the room. 
And so basically they're going to be there to protect you. So any kind of entity will not be able to come or if they're going to come close, they're going to take care of it. So you can put them in the four corners of your bedroom, four corners of your house, four corners of your street and just expand it. And basically you've just created the concept where there are beings there to protect you and you have your own safe place. And now you have all the freedom to like manage like you know, like your own, your own space and like do your work. That, that's amazing that you say that because I used to do that very exact thing. And the weirdest thing was when I did when I did that, a uh, couple things happened. Uh, now this is like again when I was back. This is a couple of years ago, so I was back in that room, right? When I did that, I felt the wind like the room got cold. <laughs> I felt like uh, some wind, you know. And uh, from then on, I think I had attracted something like really nasty. Uh, not because I did that, but I think. In doing that, it, it was a uh, maybe it was it was taken as like a uh, an attempt to defend myself, and uh, I would see this being, and this was like in the third eye, so this was like in the room at the moment. Uh, you know, upon waking up, I would see this scenario being being played out over and over again, where this uh, black tentacled being. It was like just a mass of darkness, but it had tentacles, right? And it showed, it would show a, a soldier with uh, like a knight with a sword uh, fighting this this thing. But the thing every time would overcome the the, the knight, right? So, but it, and it would take it apart in like the most gruesome ways, you know, it would take yeah. its head off. You know, I won't get into like the nasty details, but really gruesome like visions over and over, you know, and it would keep replaying. So uh, do you think that is... Uh, in, in setting up that defense grid with the, with, with the knights and the soldiers uh, and that type of thing. I also had rocks going around the house doing, for the same thing. Do you think that that attracts uh, beings that are, are, want to challenge your, your, your defense grid? <laughs> Uh, yeah, like there's a few things in it. For example, like now we start getting more awareness of how things work and we like, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this. And let's say they have entities inside us, like a nanoparticle, like a little bacteria in the body, and they're monitoring us 24-7. So they know how our body feels, they, they, don't know, they know what we're craving for, they know our thoughts and feelings, states and emotions, and like we're thinking of what we're going to do. So they're like, oh, yeah, okay, they have the open book of everything, and they can sort of foresee the future and like plan a few steps ahead. So we're planning, okay, there's going to be a soldier in my room, and I'm going to protect myself. And the thing is, a lot of times when people are trying to get better, it doesn't like matter if you're trying to create a better, like, safe place in your room with the soldiers, or you're simply doing something in life, like, I'm going to learn something. I'm going to do this and this and this. They're seeing, like, oh, if this being does this, they're going to, like, get better a lot. And so they start targeting us for that. Like, you know, like, they don't want us to get better. They're trying to scare us, freak us and stuff. So one scenario is, like, um... You create these beings in your room and they're trying to play out a scenario. It doesn't mean that it's happening for real, but it's more like they're trying to create a perception where your creative stuff does not work and we're going to tear them apart and kill them and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh shit, and it scares you, like that happened. So it's one kind of scenario where like they're trying to like sort of scare you and stop you from doing the method. Other thing is, it really like depends on how specific are we when we're creating stuff. For example, so for example, people like uh, God, please help me, or like something, and they ask like you know, like really like sort of in generalities like God or like spirit guides. There can be any kind of entity or being putting a label. Oh, I'll be your God, sure, I'll be your spirit guide, and you have a new you're like fuck yeah, I got this one, and you're know, like come on boys, like so they can have a group of like I'm gonna be a God, I'm gonna be a spirit guide, I'm gonna be your friend or uncle, your grandma or something, and they come in as your loved ones or whatever, and start start interacting with you, and like they're gonna be that warrior, they're gonna be that protector, and they you know. You haven't had the specifics like, okay, I'm going to have a warrior in my room. And what kind of warrior? Good, bad, good warrior, bad warrior, entity warrior, whatever. And so we're not specific about what we're asking for or what we're creating. And that can open up doors to too many beings. So, well, so like, you know, when we're manifesting stuff or creating it, we have to be very specific about like what we're doing. And that's like sort of like, be careful with that. <laughs> yeah, be specific. Yeah. Like making, when you make your wishes, uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> You know, like uh, all those movies and stuff, Aladdin and stuff, when he wishes on, on uh, you, you want to make sure that it's super uh, specific so that you don't, uh, you know, use your, your intentions and, and get something you weren't necessarily uh, wanting. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I don't know if this ever happens to you. I mean, 
I'm sure it does. Lately, uh, I've been waking up with, uh, with a, just a voice, just uh, speaking in terms of uh, knowledge, just like transferring knowledge. You know, it's a conversation, an ongoing conversation, and it's not like a nasty, you know, overpowering type of voice. It's it's more um, uh, informing me about what's currently going on but I can never remember what is said. I, I, in the moment when I, when I, when I wake, it's like, I'm having that, that dialogue. And it's more like, it's actually a female voice speaking to me from a place of knowledge. And, uh, the energy of it is, is actually truthful, reassuring. Um, I always forget to write down what's being said. I only just, I only know that it's, it's, uh, about our current situation with all like the, the turmoil. Does this, is, has this been happening to you? Has this ever happened to you? Is this, uh, and how, how do you focus in uh, when you're in that moment to really retain what is, uh, what is being transferred? Yeah. So uh, I think like it's a good thing that you can perceive it. Like there are actually a lot of beings out there trying to connect to us. And let's say you get rid of some like, uh, like dark forces trying to mess with you. So you open up yourself to more positive channels. And, you know, there can be beings that are neutral, just talking to us. There can be beings who want to help us and teach us and stuff. And once you're open to it, let's say like, oh, yeah, people want to make contact with aliens or something. And like, they're actually like opening themselves up for that. Um, so for you, like, you know, like I, I see you as like, so you have the like, you know, like open door for connecting and like receiving the right information. Um, to remember it, to sort of be clear about it, like, or like recall the whole thing, you can start programming yourself. For example, like, you know, like, uh, there's the NLP method, like, that I used to do, for, like, for regarding, like, remembering the dreams, like, you know, in, in the room that you sleep in, uh, you look at the object and, like, okay, whatever is going to be my wallpaper, a, a vase, a window, like, something, you choose an object that you like, that you're going to see every time you wake up, and you start programming yourself, like, every time I'm going to see this thing, I'm going to remember my dream. So you can be like, every time I see this thing, I'm going to remember all the conversations I've had with beings. I'm going to remember like my Ubis or whatever. And you program yourself. But it's like uh, when we make a decision in the evening, I have to get up at 6 a.m. We don't need to set up the clock because you just told yourself and you program your body. So you wake up earlier than that. So it's like mm -hmm. very same mechanism. We give a command and, you know, like the consciousness follows. Um, so there's that. There's also like, you know, like becoming more aware, like either looking at what is stopping the memory because a lot of times, like lately, the last few days, I'm working with people on very important cases in their life. And if we do not finish it, it's it's very hard to catch on. Because the bad guys are like, oh shit, we left a hole in our like program and stuff. We need to fix it. And they're going to attack in every way possible. We're removing our memory, removing our thoughts, removing like all the stuff. And they're just trying to block it and like overshare with other stuff. So you can like finally like have a great conversation and know a lot of information. And like, you know, like, finally, you have some more awareness or knowledge of, of what's happening and the bad guys pick up on it. And before you become aware of what's really happening, they're showing stuff in your mind where they're just trying to plug it all with, like, let's say, procrastination with more important things to do in life. And all of a sudden, like, you lost, like, oh, what happened? And that thing is gone. So, like, they're a lot of times, like, let's say, dark side targeting us for that. Like, they don't want us to receive the information and they're trying to get away from it. So like then then you'd have to like okay who's trying to sort of like like disconnect me from that who's trying to like sort of like, like cover the channels and like make me forget things and you can like again like go into that meditative state focus on any kind of beings that that pop up with like you know, like they're trying to uh, like clear your memory or whatever and you target them like take out the whole thing like I've been noticing like um feel feel like talking too much but there 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 has been cases where i'm looking at the people with the 20 and back experience like they've been like you know like uh, abducted and had like had to go with the secret space program and spending like like be being being super soldiers my lab 20, like 20 years or longer then they return into this fit like body but basically live there for 20 years their original body gets destroyed they get the clone and it's like coming back to the original place and reliving life again from like that point of view like sort of parallel reality but like you already have like 20 years of information and they did it again and again and again the person like three four times so the person like we uncovered the first stuff and he cries and he laughs and he gets this massive release finally connects the dots in his life and everything becomes clear but we just look at, at one abduction we haven't looked at the three or four others so okay we're gonna do the session next day because like we're out of time we connect like we try to connect next day he doesn't show up 
like you know like he forgot his stuff he saw all these things we connect the third day like when we have the next session he changed completely he got he went from being super open and like getting out of body and stuff to religious fanatic loving like oh love is the answer and he's all into incarnation is okay like reincarnation is okay it's okay if i reincarnate here like on there four more times he was against it like completely and all of a sudden he's a different person i'm like what happened and he's the 920 and back all the way so in two oh days God. that we like you know like since the last conversation and they that he didn't show up and then i'd like you know like of the programming he was a completely different person i'm like fuck and it was too late so like for me um when stuff like that happens i'm noticing like it's really important to take care of that stuff you know like for like you have those conversations and you have beings open up to you it's sort of sort of if you feel like it's important to you handle it try to like cover up the like you know like like take care of the let's say people who are trying to target information and stuff and like uh get that sort of information because it's valuable and if we do not take care of it the the like dark forces will try to cover everything up like they'll delete the memories like shove out some other stuff like have implanted the fake memories or whatever it's still totally a thing like they, they're targeting us every way possible <laughs> so it's it's pretty hard oh, like I'm, I'm going to people and, like it's kind of crazy do you do you get any uh like for example when you're dealing with those um those 20 and back people do you get any blowback from that as well like if you don't finish up a session do they come after you and rich as well Th that happens yeah like like the, the session i'm talking about like the day we're gonna connect the second time uh, and go like at uh, the second experience and stuff what happens is like before we connect them okay okay we send the link but before that let's check something on the mirror and the mirror is like basically working like a lie detector so uh i can have a thought it's gonna pick up if it's like let's say truth or not and like I'm like I'm like saying, Rich, they're trying to change my memories and perception of what's going on, so that like when we address it, I would perceive a whole different thing, and we would work on the fake stuff while we're not addressing the, the original stuff. The needle goes like like all the right way, and like it's reading like hell. Um, and we're like, okay, I'm gonna go address them because they're trying to mess with me and like fake my memories and stuff. And while I'm talking, there was this loss of time. Twenty minutes just disappeared in my life. I'm like, what the fuck? I was saying a thing. I looked at the like at the clock and I was like you know like uh, let's say uh, like what 18:10 and I say the next word and it's 18:30 and I'm like you know so like I I have to focus in and again like sort of like let, let's say abduction from mantis where they're trying to shove my consciousness and change things up and like just like trying to alter things but then like uh, like okay we take care of that the person doesn't show up the next one doesn't show up and the whole day like felt like I'm targeted from every way possible like you know like they're targeting people around me trying to mess up mess up their stuff so that they, they would like be like really nasty at me and there there's one thing after another technology doesn't work like work like like the workplace is fucked up one thing after another and I'm like okay they're targeting me I'm aware of being targeted I'm gonna laugh at everything and not react emotionally because it's what they're trying to get and so like um I'm not playing their game and after two days it stops but you know like when you see the per person that like goes from being getting out of body and being free and fighting the system into becoming a completely re re religious fanatic in two days it's kind of like crazy how they can reprogram a person so yeah, <laughs> it's a thing multiple personalities yeah that's that's wild that is wild is that is that like the craziest or like the the most intense um instance of that happening it's one of the recent I, ones yeah it's, it's yeah. one of the recent ones like that because because there's a lot like you know like every week something like that can happen uh you know like we work with a lot of people and it's it's very interesting because like one of my goals like uh when i was a kid like in lithuania we had the pagans so like they would work with nature and believe in like nature gods and all the stuff so like they have thousands and millions of like thunder is a god this is a god like whatever but they were like very close to nature and connecting with the spirits and everything else so i was like always admiring like uh these like old ladies like the ancestors were people can get crazy disease like you know, like we call it like rose disease or whatever uh, like the dark eye black eye like you know like whenever someone looks at you in a weird way and then you get like some shit in your body so like i would hear stories about like um how people get crazy stuff and that like happened to my relatives where one day at a wedding you know like uh you know like the couple has the best time of their life and the next day like an hour later she's in the hospital barely breathing all, all purple like you know, like about to die and here comes this like old lady she says two words everything clears out and I was like admiring that and I was like I want to do that and so like you know here I am at 22 and I'm sort of doing that in my own way and I love it but then we meet all kinds of people with let's say 
simple problems where you know like they might have relationship issues or they like you know like let's say like regarding the job and career that's okay like that's sort of easy to handle but then we go into 20 and back we go into abductions and implants and crazy stuff where let's say people's body is sort of like messed up where they can hardly move and like they're like sort of implanting and stuff like they can't move their body like they're like really like like stiff back and everything and we go back in time let's say like get a, getting out of body going back into the origins of what happened finding the crazy stories and like after the session the person's like wow i can actually move and like that's to seeing them go from like sort of disabled to actually like being able to do stuff after the session in one hour it's like crazy but i love it and so like for me like whatever i did i don't care if it's true or not if i see the people win i'm loving it you know yeah because you're getting that that confirmation from yeah physical reality <laughs> Like actually, that you said something there about the evil eye that uh, reminded me. Uh, well, I mean, we we call it the evil eye. The dark, the dark eye is also a good way to put it. Uh, that actually was was put on me uh, on my birthday many 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 years ago, uh, which is actually on the thirteenth on a Friday. Wow. <laughs> which was, must have must have like done something there. Well, it did something in my consciousness. So. Uh, this was like way before I even w was really conscious about this type of stuff, and that like you were actually you actually make your own reality. So uh, yeah, it was done by like, like some weirdo in a music store, just like snuck up behind me, and he was so strange, so strange. Just mumbled something into my into my ear, and I turn it around, and I'm like, uh, I didn't hear what he said, right? So I so I go, you know, what 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 did you say? And that saying, just saying that, like, infuriated him. He got, like, really upset with me, and he started, like, speaking in tongues at me. And this is insane. And I started walking away, you know, like, wa walking towards my friends. And, uh, like, and the guy started following me, you know. So uh, we get to a point where, like, we face off, you know, like, me and my friends, you know, we were three guys and, and him. And we're asking him, like, what's your problem, man? Like, <laughs> And this guy, I have to say that he was also like dressed, clad in black. He had a cape. <laughs> he was a really weird looking guy, you know, and he had like uh, musical instruments. So he had like these little bongos like around his, uh, around his waist that he was wearing. He just pointed at me like that and he started like speaking in tongues. And uh, he's, you know, he, he yelled at me a little bit more and then he ran off, you know. So my friends and I laughed. We were like, uh, oh, like you put a curse on you, man. You put a curse on you. From that moment, from that moment, for like a couple of years, I just had the worst luck, terrible luck, you know. And I think it's because I, I, I not only, you know, I, I think I, uh, I I validated that that guy's intention, you know, to, to put up to put that on me. But uh, yeah, for, for years and years, like uh, I, I just couldn't understand why I just kept having the worst, the worst luck. And uh, have you have you ever encountered a person that's that's done that type of thing to you? Or uh, what's up with people? Like I guess it's just people like that are I guess are taken over at at some point. Or I don't know what that guy where that guy was coming from. So I don't know if if you, yeah. if you dealt with that as well. Uh, to me, like, sort of, I'm feeling lucky because I don't think I've had it, but at the same time, like, in, in my family and our beliefs and stuff, like, you know, like, as, uh, like, I, like I said, like, we have things that we put our belief and faith in it and we empower it, so, like, let's say there's that, like, uh, red string or, like, like red ripnels or like, whatever you call it, right? Yeah. So, yeah. in Lithuania, we call it, like, oh, this is going to protect you, and, like, basically... You know, some people can, like, have it from, like, let's say, same place, and, like, you believe in it now, and then people, like, put the chanting, like, okay, you're gonna save you from this and this and this, and they program a thing. But it's, like, very similar to the crystals, like, you know, like, I actually probably have a crystal here, uh, just taking a like, showing off, right? Um, there's, like, one of my viewers actually sent me this, like, massive crystal. Um, so there's this guy who was like working with IBM computers and he was one of the first ones who was doing the programming, but he's working with crystals as, as well and saying we can program these things. So you can clear it off like, you know, like with, like, you know, with your breath out, like as soon as you blow through your nose and putting the intention clear. So you, whatever is in the crystal, you clear it with the breath out and then consciously you put the intention of what this crystal will do for you. Like, okay, this is going to... Uh, give me the energy is gonna empower me whatever blah 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 and we sort of program the thing and we believe in it we trust it and now since we like uh, work with it like for example 
a few months ago, my cat was so sick, like, that the, the vet said, like, you know, like, hey, your cat's gonna die in two weeks. And I was like, fuck, like, that really, like, served my shit up because I love my cat now. So, like, I was doing, doing like, my visual work, and at the same time, I programmed this quick crystal that, okay, my cat's gonna lay here next to him, and so this one will empower him, and let's say, will, like, heal his organs and stuff like that. Uh, his six months, healthy as can be, jumping on the highest places and, like, you know, like, having a great time. My cat is, like, loving it. So, wow. basically... He went from ba barely being alive to like sort of the, from the IV bags and everything to running around and being a happy cat. And I'm like, awesome. But the thing is, like, uh, we can choose any kind of objects around us and program them. And at the same time, we can program ourselves or let's say our energy bubble. So like as a kid, um, I sort of felt like, you know, like I'm, I'm safe. Like no matter what happens in the world, I am protected. And I was like programming myself where nothing can harm me and like, you know, like uh, I'm protected and no one can go on me. So... For example, my classmate, like, you know, like, she, like, would come to visit me and stuff, and we would play around, and they do things together, and then, like, it's midnight, and she's gonna go home, and I'm like, well, I can't let her go home alone, because I'm being responsible, and I'm gonna, gonna escort her to her house, but then I'm the one going back home alone, you know, and so, like, there are, like, gangs there, like, you know, like, there's, like, five, seven guys, and I'm like, you know, like, the first part, like, oh, shit, I'm alone, and I'm gonna get attacked. But that would be the other case, like, where if I would not empower myself. Now I'm walking with my head up high, and I'm like, no one can touch me. And I, they don't even look at me, they don't, they don't interact with, with me and stuff. And I basically program myself to where that creepy kind of stuff can't really mess with me. And so like, I think I got lucky in that sort of way where I, I'm protecting myself, but I'm working with people who had the sort of like black magic done to them and it's like crazy stuff. Like it's, when you hear their stories, when there's like uh, people who get the sort of thing like either, either curse put on them, and literally, like, you know, they live in a nice house, and there's frogs and snakes coming from every pipe and every possible hole, like, hole in the house, filling their house, like, with, like, flooding and everything, like, crazy stuff. There's another person who, like, let's say, gets the spiritual stuff and teaching and some becomes so successful that this is, like, she's making millions. And all of a sudden, this lady appears, uh, like, problems with husband, loses the business, and the lady basically takes over absolutely everything and, be and becomes ten times more successful. So there are times where... They're using black magic and there can be connections to the past lives where you've met with this person and you had some sort of relationship and now they hate you for some reason. So they end up being here on earth and uh, like as, as, like they might not be fully conscious of why they're doing it, but they have this like so like like this person I hate him. And like they feel this like nasty emotions towards some people and they target us with like whichever way they can. So there are those kinds of scenarios. They're like, you know, sometimes we are just targets because of what we did in the past life. Doesn't mean that we did bad stuff, but more like, you know, self-protection. We won the game too many times that they're like, they're hating us uh, like a lot. So those are scenarios, but like, um, I'm feeling lucky in that sort of way. Like I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm really protected and like, I'm, I'm basically putting myself in the place where like, you know, can't, can't touch me sort of. So I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of I, I relate to that as well because uh, I've always, for some reason, I've had that um, that intuitive sense as well, where it's just like uh, you're safe, you're safe, you're gonna be safe, you're fine, like uh, you're protected, you're protected. It just was always there. So uh, I would say maybe on on the, uh, I mean, we always we talk about like how we're always messed with, but we we don't always talk about how we're supported. So that could also be a way in which we're, we're being reassured that we are also being supported in some ways, right? Yeah. I've had this, like, uh, let's say, like, from my birth, like, my, I think I, I would say it was my parents or my godfather, like, they gave me a gift of, like, this small teddy bear, but since I was a kid, like, he was my one and only teddy bear, and it, I don't need anyone else, he's the one. But after a while, like, as, as a kid, I started, like, seeing things, like, oh, like, shit, like, I'm seeing entities and stuff. I did not understand what it was at the time. Like, I did not have labels for it, but I was experiencing stuff. And the steady beer had actually, like, this conscious being that would come to visit me, and, like, you know, he was Mickey. But he would, like, come and talk to me and teach me, and, like, you know, like, hey, don't worry, little girl, they're just messing with you, they don't, they don't understand stuff. And he would be there to support me, like, tell, tell me about how things work, and, like, you know, like, really support me as a being, and I was, like, like feeling really good. And so, like, that teddy bear was sort of my safe place, because every time I talk to it, real life being comes up, and, like, I can actually connect with, like, this, like, massive consciousness and like actually have someone to support me i did not understand what was going on at the time i thought like everyone has sort of thing but apparently not really so like i was like oh shit <laughs> like, that was just me huh so crazy <laughs> stuff but yeah <laughs> that's awesome same Talking thing like that. sorry uh same oh, thing like for example like being in a classroom and like you know, like i have to solve thing like i'm really bad at math like I, i'm just like 
math not me like no 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 so like I'm, I, I was called like hey you have to solve this thing on like on the chalkboard i'm like shit and so like as i'm writing and like i'm, I'm really sort of like worrying okay i don't know the answer and stuff boom a being pops up and he's like hey just write this and like he like repeat repeat my movements and i was like tracking him and writing stuff and he's like okay you're done cool go to bed and i'm like and it worked. like so like there was someone else like coming up and supporting me and just like taking care of the crazy stuff for me so uh, we're supportive in many ways if we we're like sort of allowing that thing to come. You know? Have you, uh, were you able to locate like uh, who it was specifically? I mean, it's not, I know it's not like uh, the details aren't always the most important, but uh, just just curious to know like uh, if you're able to, to identify the, that being's role for, for you. Hmm. At that time when that stuff was happening, I was sort of like, uh, sort of like maybe not understanding what's going on or why or sort of like believing that everyone sort of have it or like maybe i'm just different and i'm hearing stuff so like don't tell anyone but um i was not that aware to explore that so like i'm telling you about it because it happened but at that time i did not explore though right now let's say focus in on it i can actually go to body and track them down and like oh this is who you are like hi nice to meet you again so like uh, right now i could find out but like before then i was not um so much like into learning about it or going for it. It just happened in my life and I was like, thanks. You know, sort of like feeling lucky, but not uh, using or like understanding the whole thing like fully. Well, if you ever have a math test, uh, it, it might be, uh, <laughs> it might be a good thing to do. I'm, I'm the same man. math, not my thing, not my thing, but you know, this stuff, totally my thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and in terms of like beings, uh, again, like on that same note, beings like supporting, uh, I had a really interesting uh, experience last year. I mean, we call them dreams, but I, I am, like I said, like I've said before, I'm more than convinced it's more, it's absolutely more than that. Uh, I don't even like calling them dreams anymore because it's just like you go somewhere else and you experience, you continue to experience. Um, so that particular experience last year was uh, during a time where I was completely just like I had totally been burnt out from like the year just working hard and uh, I got to a point where like uh, my uh, on the physical level I was like really really anxious never before have I been that anxious I'm normally a very you know very calm and uh, I, can, I can work through a lot of stuff but uh, I was just e exhausted in every way you know lots of changes yeah. in the family that's just a huge life changes I moved twice Lots of stuff. So that caused uh, exhaustion, physical and emotion and emotional. And it led to this anxiety that day after day, I just couldn't shake. You know, I didn't realize it was due to, to those physical factors. Now, I had a, a dream where because uh, I had I kind of, it came to the point where I was just asking, you know, asked for some some support because I just uh, couldn't uh, I couldn't process. So I, I had this amazing dream where, um, or experience where I'm in this realm. Okay, uh, the, the the night the sky was at night. And there was tons of colors, and uh, the sky was just uh, like a light show. But it was it was nighttime, and uh, I was on this beautiful property. Uh, made of stones. I mean, the, there was like stones that you could walk on, and uh beautiful house and i was outside and lots of it was surrounded by nature and there was this tiger being okay uh it grabbed me like i i think i, I think it was i can't remember it was a little it was a year ago i was either standing or lying down it it put its paw on my stomach and it, it actually felt like it went in my stomach and like i felt like its claws it was like pulling it wasn't pain it was just pressure and it was pulling at me and uh from there uh it, it goes into the center of the circular uh area surrounded by stones and it just started throwing up like all kinds of like i don't know i don't even know what it was like slime it was just throwing up like this green slime yellow slime and uh it really felt like uh, once, once I awoke from that, it felt like it, uh, the anxiety just lifted, everything lifted and it had eased off majorly. So, um, on that note, uh, could that have been, um, you know, how we have like our, our spirit animals and that type of thing. 
do, do you see it as that type of thing? Do you see it as maybe beings taken on an, an, an animal form? And, um, and have you ever encountered um, animal spirits that uh, support you in, in those ways? Yeah, and I think like it could be both, like either spirit animal or just another being, because eventually it can be just consciousness putting itself into the different body and experiencing as that, or like you know, like you're like let's, let's say consciousness, or like let's say your friend some time ago now is like playing as the animal and it's your spirit guidance, like so like it can take different forms, and eventually like labors don't really matter, but like hey, this being is helping me, and like there are a lot of times where let's say beings can do astral surgeries on us. So for example, we're feeling messed up. And we're gonna have people or like beings in any kind of shape and form, like where like it's humanoid, where it's Procyon or Trucyon or like Pleiadian or just an animal. They can do all kinds of stuff to our body, like maybe touch us, maybe literally do the surgery, or like you know, like just like whatever way they're like working with us, uh, getting the stuff out is like literally like all the toxicity, maybe entities, maybe other stuff comes out in that sort of like shape and form, where like looks like slime. But you come out here and this, let's say, actual surgery was done on you and you're clear from that issue. So there are a lot of beings who can actually, like, we ask for help and, like, they reach out to us and they help. Sometimes they're, they're like, they're protecting us. We know, like, we had relationships with them. They can be our family from, like, some our li lifetime. And we have, like, actually plenty of beings that are good there, like, good for us and, like, willing to help and all. And, like, you know, like, hey, you have, like, lots of stuff. We're going to be there to help you. And it might come out like, oh, this is nasty, like, weird. But you come out, like, and wake up and, like, wow, feel Feeling awesome today, you know. So it, it happens quite a lot. Feel, feeling fine. <laughs> yes. um, <laughs> uh, I actually have like the. I'm seeing like there's a theme of cats that figures really prominently in my life. I've been surrounded by cats since. Uh, I mean, not a lot of cats. So I'm not like a. But uh, I've always had like at least one cat in my life somewhere since I was a kid, and I, and I realized I realized this like after that dream. I was like, wow, like. Uh, it, it goes beyond the physical. I mean, it, it's, I, do you have that? I mean, you said you have a cat. I, I also have two cats. Have you have you always had like cats around you, or is? Uh... Uh, yeah, basically had like cats since I was like uh, ten years old. So same cat, like you know, like for twelve years. I'm glad that he's like one. But like, I think like I'm looking at dogs, but definitely a cat is like my most preferable animal. Um, like. Yeah, but like, you know, like when I look at the like uh, multiverse and what's going on, let's say on the physical, like a uh, physical universe, it's it's kind of funny because like, you know, like we look at dogs and God kind of spelled backwards and all like, uh, yeah. but the connection, you know, like when you look at it, there are these like Anunnaki canine beings and they're like, let's say the ones in like really nasty killers and stuff, but there's a specific group of like Anunnaki, like werewolf like beings. And they're like slaughter machines. They see you, they kill you. Like they didn't really need a reason. They just like have fun with that. And so how dare we have dogs killing us all the way? And over here, dogs are the best man's friends or like karma, like working it up, you know? <laughs> um, so there's that. But like with, with cats, like uh, it, it doesn't mean that all dogs are bad out there. I'm just like saying like, you know, like for like an example, but like uh, over here, like, I'm looking at like, like, like Lyran race. They're like all like cat beings, like say zoo tracks or like also like cat lines, like, you know, like can like appear like a tiger, lion, like cat-like feline being. Um, and there are like a lot of them who are like very intelligent, free, like they're literally like, you can't control those beings. Like they're going to have their own free will, just like a natural cat. But uh, <laughs> they're like fighters and like working like for for, for good size and stuff. And again, like it's, it's more like good or bad is like relative because they're like specific groups, like not the whole race, but they're groups who work for whatever side. But uh, definitely like, you know, like cat, cat like beings. I've met tons of them and they're working their ass off to help like humanity and there be beings out there. Mm. It's, it's, it's like funny. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Kind of like this, like, soulful connection where, like, we're here and the cats are, like, like uh, preferable to a lot of be like, people. Because, like, you know, we might have had relationships out there where, like, we just, like, lived as one of those beings. And, like, you know, if we cover that, like, people can live with, like, snake-like beings, like, with reptilians and stuff. So whatever animal we like in, in this lifetime, we'll probably have a relationship out there. So, like, it's a sort of preferable species, you know? <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Uh, you mentioned the... Uh the canine beings i actually saw we actually had one of those in in, in our in, in the room in the bedroom uh, a couple weeks ago uh, are they all uh because you say i and i have i have never actually uh explored that that whole avenue are those uh those anunnaki beings they're purely canine or they've, they've got different they've got different uh i guess they got different forms 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, different forms uh, of killing, like positive. reptilians, canine, like sorry. Uh, are, do you think they're positive or negative, or are they all? Is is it the same? Does it work the same way as like all the other beings we have out there, or is that specific group labeled as the Anunnaki uh, negative? Yeah, pretty much the same as others, like, you know, they're good and bad ones, like, they basically, like, okay, this is the race, and beings will choose a role they're gonna play, so they, they have groups that are, like, really harsh killers, or, like, you know, like, into controlling the world, and dominating, and, like, all the stuff, but I've, I've met, like, canine beings, like, I, I have a client uh, who was, like, really, like, right now working at saving animals, and specifically lots of dogs, and, like, you know, like, all the, like, canine, like, uh, animals, so... In the past life, her race, like, literally kidnapped the Anunnaki canine, like, like cubs, and, you know, like, sort of, like, we're going to experiment with them because it's the new race we haven't seen them. Here comes the Anunnaki canine. They're like, okay, give us our kids back, and we're not going to have anything. And they're like, no, fuck you, and kill everyone. And so the whole race turns into, you fucking bastards. And so they go fight and fight, like, you know, like, like humans messed up with these guys, and they're coming after this. And so, like, the girl who was playing a part in it, like, she was not fully aware of what's going on, but she's, like, being a good soldier, following the rules, and slaughtering an Anaki canine. In this lifetime, she has tons of issues with dogs and, like, really saving them as much as possible. So, like, sort of like a, you know, like, karma, but basically, oh, I've done some bad shit, I'm gonna sort of, like, help out in this life. But it's more like, you know, like, like having the conscious and, like, being a good being or sort of, like, playing it off for yourself because you like it and want to. So, like, you know, like, just because you do something bad doesn't mean, like, you have to really go after it. Because, like, bad people who are, like, into pedophilia, raping, and different kind of stuff, they didn't necessarily have to be like, oh, I'm gonna reincarnate and play a good role. No, they're gonna be like, fuck you, everyone, I'm gonna do this again. <laughs> it was so, <laughs> really, the choice of consciousness. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Not good, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got so there's, there's so much here too. Like, uh, I'm like trying to pick stuff that like works on the themes we're talking about. But mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Uh, on dreams, okay, it's still still on dreams. Um, lately, lately, this is like really recent. Uh, you know, the past two weeks. I've been having these, again, dreams where uh, I'm on... Have you ever seen Star Trek? Mm, no. no. Okay. Well, there was this... You know you know the show, right? Yeah, I've heard of it. So, the, the Star Trek, and there's a specific uh, era of Star Trek that took place in the uh, late 80s and the 90s, okay? So, uh, basically, they're traveling around on a ship, right? So, uh, the dream is I'm on that ship and um uh these two beings uh dressed remember what we talked about the, the the beings that had the uh the mask for coronavirus yeah <laughs> yeah well they had like they were same thing like the red mask uh blue skin right there's two of them they weren't as tall and they're 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 more in an ethereal form so they're more uh transparent and, and the dream is I'm on the ship and they're invading, they're trying to like get control of the ship and, and they're flying around and like we're, we're trying to like, uh, the, the crew of the ship is being, um, trying to defend against that, uh, those two beings. Um, now I remember telling you that the, I mean, I remember we had talked about uh, two beings always being present uh, or very often being present in, in my dreams where they, we, they try to manipulate and, and uh, harass, but I had never seen them take uh, that type of form. Um, now, when we're talking about like the ship and uh, and that whole trying to invade thing, you think that was a uh, way of the way of maybe my my spirit communicating to me that they're trying to to take uh, control, take control of me, or take hold of that. And uh, the second question linked to that is, uh, have you ever had um, those types of metaphorical uh, experiences? Yeah, so there's partly that, but at the same time, like, uh, uh, we lived for so long that, like, we have tons of other aspects of self still, like, living in the present and, like, you know, like, just, like, either, like, here in the physical or in the other places. 
and we literally can have like various relationships with beings for example like oh okay you and i were like best buddies but we're gonna duke it out and like we're just gonna have fun killing each other or something like just like enjoying the experience you know like some people like like doing that like let's go like play a video game one-on-one -on -one, like see who's better like you know people play basketball against each other like play you know you might have a music fight with someone else like you know like, you're just showing off your skills and having fun so let's say you and our group of people let's say those two that go going against you and all uh you know th there is that fight and it can be like you know, like you just tune into the other aspect of yourself that is on the ship, and your decision were like, oh, here they are attacking me again. We're just gonna have fun duking it out, or maybe not. Maybe you're actually having a real like, serious fight, and like this is actually like nothing fun there. Um, but like there are a lot of scenarios where we can p meet people in this life and like other places, and they, they might be repetitive specific groups. But it's just like having this, let's say, uh, experiential like a uh, mm, like experience where they're going to come after us again and again and again is going to be sort of repetitive because there's some sort of competition going on they don't like us they might chase after something or like you're know, like hey you know someone gives them a command suppress a being and they're going to show up in any kind of form and way they can either in this life or another aspect of self that can get attacked so it's more like you can tune in and like see like oh that part of me is being attacked but you know every part of us that is out there that, that can get attacked is very related to, to this one so whatever happens to those parts like eventually sort of like still leads to this physical body so if you can feel like, like hey something's targeting me it might be those two beings so like it, it happens a lot um for me, I've had a similar thing, like, you know, like, let, let's say, like, in, you know, like, where, like, I'm having the experience or something showed to me, like, whatever, whatever some would call dreams, something pops up and I'm experiencing stuff, but when I wake up, like, oh, it's actually metaphorical, because if I analyze what's happening, it's like, you know, like, might look like, oh, look, two birds flying and this is some of what stuff happens and, like, something, like, something, blah, 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 just, like, a scenery, but nothing, like, very important, but, like, you wake up and you analyze what happened, you're actually, oh, damn, just, like, actually process my life and, like, you can, I, you can understand this stuff, so, like, some people can decipher like the dreams and like like look at look at it and explain things or it's like see mm. like hey this is just a dream it doesn't matter so for me like it's sort of important writing the like, writing it down because like okay i experienced something it stands out in any way and like um i'm not writing it because like i'm really interested in everything that's going on there but at the same time it's like practicing the memory practicing like I need to remember it so like my consciousness, oh, I have to pay attention to this. We're just like, some people, oh, I don't need a story. I don't care about what happens in there. But you, at the same time, you're sort of like, you don't care about like having that experience. So, you know, keeping the journal is like what makes it sort of available for it as well. Cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, on, on, on that same note, uh, I just had a dream a couple of days ago where again, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm not even like myself, you know, I think it was playing something being played out somewhere else. So it was, uh, yeah. I was actually a woman <laughs> with uh, some type of like evil stepmom and a, and a cousin or a friend or son. There was like, again, three beings, right? And uh, this was playing out in an underground base. So, um, and now I'm gonna like ask if like you've seen any of these types of things, um, you know, your take on it. Uh, underground base, where there's people walking around in uh, hazmat suits, uh, but uh, they're not actually they're not actually human in the in the hazmat suits. They they they're more they they grunt and they're more primal than than actual human than you know humans that say hey stop you know very very primal. Um, they make strange sounds. I never really saw a face. You just have because they're covered in these suits. Uh, they got flamethrowers and, uh, you know, uh, guarding, you know, some, some of these uh, rooms, I was going from like room to room, uh, and, and some things were more heavily guarded. Um, one of the particular rooms was very strange. It had like this, uh, green, uh, like living substance on the floor, but it could be like telekinetically like molded, like you could control it with your, with your mind. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like these, uh, when, when the beings saw me, when the guys in the hazmat suit saw me, they, they, uh, they were kind of like, I, from what I remember, they were torching what was on the floor and they came after me and I was able to use that, that green stuff to, to tie them up. And when, when, when I uh, activated that, that stuff, I could see like faces and, and like uh, in, in, in that, that slime or whatever it was, you could see like faces and of people and and uh, 
uh, heads, different like it was like stretching up like a like a drop like that. And you in it, you would see like someone's face, and it was just tons of that, you know. And it would come up off the ground, and it would wrap wrap around those uh, people in the hazmat suits. Uh, and then from there, this is like so weird. From there, run out of that room, <laughs> uh, go into uh, another room, and uh, again, like these those beings that are related with me had transformed into like these more uh, monster-like creatures. Uh, and, and they started uh, battling each other. Um, and uh, from there, I was like jumping points of view. I was jumping from like the first person point of view where like I'm actually taking part of this and uh, the third person point of view where I'm watching the three beings go at it. Um, have you ever encountered th th that type of dynamic where you, you, you enter into a, a place like that uh where it's just completely insane <laughs> like i mean from a from a 3d perspective and uh how do you make sense of uh something like that is that is that something that plays out in real time as a game is that something that we're you know is taking place in an alternate reality um yeah that's the question <laughs> Um, yeah, interesting experience, and there's actually a lot of these. Like, you know, like it's it's actually fun when the consciousness plays out. Like, oh, Earth is a nice looking place. We're gonna put some waterfalls, flat flower here, flower there. It's all fun. But we also mm -hmm. have like sort of psychopaths and people who are into killing and gore and stuff. And some people prefer horror movies over everything and all. So mm -hmm. sometimes consciousness wants to play out like in the beautiful world. Sometimes it's gonna create like real harsh mess, and people can be on drugs and LCD, and they're seeing all this hallucinative stuff. There are all kinds of realities that can be created. So what some consider like peaceful and, and beautiful, others will have fun in an all kind of fucked up world, like where there's eyes on the walls and licking and everything, and there's like shit dropping from the like ceilings and stuff, and you're like, what the fuck is this place? And it creeps you out in every possible way. Oh. And and some people are like, hey, this is fun. Like this is like my creativity. I'm just like dropping myself out there. Like with some people, like you know, like people create art and it comes out in various ways. And you know, you look at this pipe and you're like. What is this? And I was like, oh, a pipe, nice. And so eventually, you know, like, art is that, like, thing, like, that's, that's gonna call out your reaction in sort of some sort of way, like, doesn't matter if it's good or not, like, it's all about, like, getting the reaction out of it. So, same with, like, universes, consciousness and beings, like, can create, like, planets in different kind of places, and some of it will be like, very beautiful, some of it will be nasty as can be, but it's also part of creation. So people choose how to do it, whatever they want. And so let's say you end up in a place where someone else created it, but it was not that nice. And like they have mechanisms where like, you know, like the slime pops up with like the skulls and different things. And for them, it's like, this is my world. This is what I like doing and stuff. And again, it can be usually sort of like experimental. They're like testing out what's going to happen if, and they're putting this thing and they're constructing because we need variety. If everything would be the same, it would be boring as fuck. And so we need to create like some, you know, some new stuff. And, you know, so we can have those experiences and, um, I get out of get out there like in a different kind of world and same thing like you know like you, some of these worlds are like very actually pretty and like this is nice but I get in some place where like the fuck is going on there because like er every single step is like a mystery tunnel like rabbit hole like with a lot of nasty creatures and they're like shape shifting and like you know like you have like crazy stuff and you don't get what's going on and so you're happy when it ends but at the same time uh, sometimes we don't even need to like use logic and sort of decipher like okay what does that mean what does that mean what does that mean like, sometimes we just experience things for the for the purpose of experiencing it what would it be mm -hmm. like if and like so there's no grand skill purpose of having this or that it's more like i just want to experience that stuff and we just go for it so you know just finding out what if what does it feel like one uh, like all the stuff but there are plenty of pay, like like places in the underground basis where like he's here on earth or in other worlds uh, there's a lot of creepy stuff there depending on, on where it is and uh, what you're seeing is like it's just one of those places and like with different kind of mechanisms and there's a lot of these things man uh yeah and again on on that dream uh, on that dream aspect um uh, just another another uh situation that was pretty interesting uh i was staying in this house uh, that I rent for the weekend, go to sleep, have a dream. I'm in the house, walk outside, and this man shows up. He's got a long beard, weird guy, right? I talk to him a bit, wake up, don't think anything of it, right? So the end of the weekend comes, I decide to, you know, 
you end up having to leave, right? Uh, packing up the bags and this car arrives. Out of the car comes the same guy that I dreamt about the night before. It was him. Like, I, it actually took me aback when, when, when uh, he got out of the car. It was the owner of the place. And uh, we started talking and I just couldn't believe that this was the same guy that I had spoken to the night before. I had never seen this man before in my life. Yeah. Uh, do you connect with places in that way? Do you, do you connect with uh, maybe people who, who live there? Uh, does, does being in a place connect you with, with people that either own the place or have lived there before? <clears throat> It happens quite a bit. For example, like like very similar experience to where I let's see, I'm gonna rent an apartment and I go there and I'm like, hmm, I'm getting this weird sense that I know people that live there and I'm literally getting a picture of a person. I'm like, oh look, okay, so I sort of I sort of like can see him and stuff. And like I'm gonna rent this, so like I'm I'm waiting for the like land like landlord to come over. Like I'm finally gonna meet him and like sign the papers and stuff. And he comes and this was exactly who I saw. I never saw the person before in my life. Never met him at all. But I get this picture. Like I, I'm next to the door, just waiting. Boom, comes up like, oh, okay. There's like, it, I'm just gonna accept the stuff. He comes and it was exactly the same thing that I saw. So a lot of times, like you know, like we have that like ability to perceive stuff, to foresee stuff. It's more like we are just walking point of awareness and like you know, point of view. Yeah. So we see something and we become aware of it, and it's as if like we can access the story of that stuff. We can access like all the information that happened previously. We look at all the memories and we're like basically walking galactic historians of everything. Like where it's an item, like some people like there's like I don't know how we call those like in in America, but like like extra senses or like you know, like they have like sort of like ability like as person stuff. They can pick up an item and they can be of a person that got kidnapped and it can be just a napkin and they're like oh this person is right there and they, they got there. So it's a very similar ability to where everyone can do it if they work on their abilities. But any kind of item, every everything around us is information. Like all the energy, like all of this is information. And if we tune in ourselves to that sort of thing, we like. We see stuff, but we get information. So, like, where it's people, where it's items, where it's past lives, or whatever, we get everything. And it's like up to us to pick it out to sort of understand it and all. But like, if we work on it, like, we totally have all the abilities where like it's finding out about people, about the past, about like items and different things. But we have all, we have it all. It's like actually pretty cool. It it is. It's fascinating because you can. These are skills that you can actually uh, harness, you know, and and. Uh, it really is a matter. There is so much. There's so much. Just talking about all this stuff, it, it's apparent to me about you know how multi-dimensional just the, like your abilities are. You're able to absorb information from objects. You're able to program objects. You're able to or or things or you know you're able to program yourself. You're able to you know travel in, in so many different ways. Um, there's so much to to. To work on i mean just one of those skills is is, is a world yeah. of, of stuff um is is there one for you that you really focus on more than the others i mean i know there's the out of body thing but other than the out of body thing is there is there one that you really uh, focus on or want to improve upon uh i would say you know what in America, you can't call it healing in an enforceable way, but like, let's say energy work, for example, like let's put a different label so that people would not get mad at us and all. Uh, like a few days ago, like I'm doing this like energy work, like healing or whatever. I focus like on either myself or some people that have like a illness or whatever, or some sort of problems. And I'm just like, you know, like working through vibration, through love, through visuals, so, like let's say I have my wisdom tooth coming out. And like, like it's just going like weird sideways, and then like my whole jaw locked up where I can't open my mouth normally. So like, ah, oh, no. ah shit, like that's that was all I can. Like I can't eat normally and stuff. It was like hurting like hell and swelling. I'm like, this is like crazy. And so like, okay, I'm just gonna like lay down and like do the visual work on myself. So basically, uh, this is like how I'm right now. Like I just put myself in the mirror image right before me, and I'm like, let's say doing actual surgery on myself or different kind of things, and I'm just visualizing the tooth area, and I'm healing it, I'm sending the energy, and I'm basically. I'm like a builder, I'm gonna put it in a place and stuff and like just like draw it whichever way I want. So there's that part and I was talking to Rich recently and he was like sharing like, you know, like, hey, well, try this. And like, so like, I, I have a lot of like, uh, let's say awareness and my own stuff that, that comes natural to me, but I don't know everything. Like, and like it's, I have to learn a lot myself. And Rich shares like, okay, you can actually, like everything that you're doing right now, you can actually like visualize a workshop around you. So like when I'm here working with myself, 
I can visualize, let's say, a room with all the tools, with like all the fancy technology, and I'm gonna take this massive laser, and I'm like, you know, like you got gonna use this sense, like um, stem cells, or like how is that called? Is that the right yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. So like that sort of thing, and like I'm just like putting all kinds of things and like working with myself, and next day I wake up, oh, oh like I can move my mouth. What the hell? Like, and it's all fine. And like, like yesterday it was hurting like hell, and I was like, hmm. I actually feel the good, like everything's fine and I was doing the same for sort of work with other people like where it's like um someone I know or like just like or just like a stranger and stuff and like oh okay this like person has a flu this person is not not doing so good this person has a headache and I just like so I'm sending like their my, my energy like or love or whatever and you can like visualize a body and like you know like a, some some people will see like the black spots in the body so you can literally clear them out like like shove some love in there and like like, like healing energy and stuff and literally they call you like hey my headache got away and stuff and so that is something like I love working on like I'm not doing it as much as I would like to uh, so like not, not not my biggest priority, but like if, if I would practice it more, like you know, like get really good at this, I, w I would love to help a lot of people. And like it's something that um, I don't have to do to get like when I'm when I'm out of body, like you know, I'm just like right here right now. I see a person or like I visualize them and like boom, I do the work and like it works. So I love that. I, I want to like really get good at it. I want to try like not lots of new things, learn about it, and um. Well, like when working with people, I see like tons of issues that they have, and like I just wish I would be better at like helping them in one way or another. So like I'm always like willing to learn more. And like one of the recent things, like Chris showed me, like hey, this is actually working for me. So I'm like, well, I want to do this for others a lot and just like share the methods. So like I think like everyone can do this whole like whole stuff. It's just a matter of practicing and believing in yourself. Yeah, I agree. I I, I think it's really a, a matter of uh, transforming your your inner dialogue to to get to the point where uh, you know we all have our strong our strong points where we're naturally inclined to be um, yeah. good at something but i think uh, like you said if, if we work on any one of those on those skills we can invent we can advance them you know and uh, uh i mean we're examples of that i i firmly believe that everyone the same way i think that everyone can sing <laughs> or you know or or draw you know the varying levels yeah. uh everyone can do this type of thing it's just a matter of um practice and removing the limiting self uh, belief, uh limiting limiting self-talk 